So again, we're talking about home energy use and we'll look at it from a number of different angles. We'll start by looking at uh, our electric utility bills. Uh, again, we're not gonna talk too much about thermal today. That'll be something we address um, in the coming weeks if you're able to join any of those other webinars. Um, but we're gonna look at the bills and we'll look at some ways to assess our energy use and how to save energy uh, as we get close to the end today before we take questions. So um, that's where we'll start. Um, in, in order to look at the electric bills, we really need to have an understanding of what energy is. And so uh, I, I wanted just to, to distinguish between power and energy here, just so we know what we're looking for on the utility bill. And so we'll get to that in just a minute, but energy really does take into account the amount of time that you're using something. And so, um, you know, I, I shared the analogy here of if you're driving in your car, you know what your speed is. In this example, you're driving 30 miles per hour, uh, but you're after two hours of driving that speed, that's going to mean that you go 30 times two equals 60 miles. And so uh, that analogy is, is very similar to how electricity works. And so the light bulb example here, we could just replace that, uh, that example with the light bulbs. Now we have a 30 watt light bulb, which is the power and that's what the W is, it stands for watts. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. And if we use that light bulb for two hours, then it's 30 times two, just like we did in the, in the example with the speedometer. In this case, it equals 60 watt hours, WH. And that's really what we wanna look out for is anytime that we see that letter H, it means that hours are included or time is included. And that's what you're being billed for, not just the power, because the utility provider really doesn't know what kind of light bulb you have, all they're gonna be able to measure is the watt hours. And that's what they read on the outside of your house, how many watt hours, or in, in, in the case of most energy bills, it's gonna be in kilowatt hours, KWH, uh, kilowatt hours. And so, um, you know, a utility company can't do item by item how much energy you're using, uh, but they're gonna know how many for the entire household how many kilowatt hours you're using. So again, if you don't get it yet, I think you will as we go through the utility bills, we're really gonna be looking for those watt hours or kilowatt hours. <clears throat> okay, so with that said, I'll give you just one example. And again, here's a little bit of math and I'm, you know, I apologize if you're not a math person and I promise we won't do too much math here, but uh, just to reemphasize that point, it's a very simple equation. It's power multiplied by time and that's what your energy is. So the same example we just did, but another way of looking at that equation. Um, and, and so you need those two factors, power and time. And if you know those two things, that's what you're being billed for your energy. And so I've included an example here of three different light bulbs, the old uh, fashioned incandescent light bulbs. Um, and, and those use uh, a lot more energy. What you see is the more energy efficient uh, LED light bulb uses less um, has less power, and as a result, it uses less uh, energy. And, and so you see the difference in cost there. Um, all three of these light bulbs put through the same test, um, just because the LED has less power, it's only eight and a half watts, then as a result, it's gonna use less kilowatt hours or energy, only 12 kilowatt hours. And so you end up paying uh, much less for that. Okay, so that's the basic idea there. And you can do this for any kind of device in your home. Uh, again, I don't wanna belabor the math here, but uh, for those of you that uh, are interested, that equation's pretty much the same for any electrical device that you have, whether it be a motor or a light bulb, you need the power of the device and you need how long you're using it. And that's what you're being charged for. So in the motor example, if you did the math on that, you're being charged for 27 kilowatt hours based on uh, whatever, however, however often uh, you were using it. And then for the light bulb, it's 84 kilowatt hours. So one thing I'll point out here is the light bulb, the light bulb is less powerful than the motor. You might uh, imagine that's true. Uh, the light bulb is only 60 watts, uh, but because you use a light bulb much more often in, in this example, the light bulb is using more energy, 84 kilowatt hours. So that's just something to keep in mind. We really wanna uh, make sure you understand that as we start to look at these bills. So um, I do have uh, the BGE uh, bill pulled up here. I know there's a lot of uh, details on here. 
Um, I'm just taking a look at the chat function here and make sure everyone can hear me. If you can't hear me, uh, just let me know, send me a message if there's any problem with audio or video. Um, uh, and I'll try to keep an eye on that. But with that said, uh, here's a BG and an e bill. There's a lot of details uh, shared on here. A um, couple things I'll point out about it. And, and every bill looks a little bit different, but you can pretty much find the same bit of information uh, on, on each one. So I'll point out a few things as we look at this. Let me see if I can pull up my laser pointer to help. Okay, where is it? Um, Let me see. Okay, I think, I think that's on there now. So we're gonna ignore this, this whole side of the bill here on the right-hand side where it's giving the gas details. We're only gonna be looking at electric today. Uh, and the first thing I'll point out is the uh, historic uh, bar chart. Uh, most utility bills in Maryland have this on there. It goes month by month, how many kilowatt hours or energy is used each month for the house, okay? And so that kind of gives you an idea. In the October, November months, you'll see uh, lower for this example. Um, in the um, colder seasons, you might have a little bit peak here, maybe have electric heating or something like that increasing. Um, in the summer months, you ha might have more air conditioning running, so you might have some higher periods there. And this actually gives 13 months, so you can compare the current month to one year previous. So that's one piece of information that's useful. And then here flashing uh, in the green is 617 kilowatt hours. So for the current billing month, that's your energy use in this example, 617. So that's a little below the uh, state average, um, but uh, yours might be higher or lower. Um, but just for example, we'll look at kind of the impacts uh, that this has on your bill. So this is the main thing that you're getting charged for. There are a few items that are flat rate charges on here. And I know this is kind of small, you can't see all of the details, um, but there are some flat rate charges. Customer charges, I think is, if I can make that out, is 750. Some of those charges, it doesn't matter how much electricity you're using, you're still gonna pay that. Um, and that's just part of the infrastructure, the substation, all of the equipment that, that your utility provider uh, 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 it's charging you for. And so if you cut your power completely and you're in the dark, you're still gonna be paying that flat rate fee. So uh, that's something, those, those flat rate fees are things you'd have to subtract uh, from your total bill if you were interested in what your uh, electrical charge for, was. If you were just interested in what you're paying for the uh, energy that you're using, you would subtract those flat rate charges. And it's easy to tell on this bill uh, because they're not multiplied by your energy use. Most of these line items have been multiplied by your energy use. So you're gonna see over and over again, 617 kilowatts times some uh, 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 factor, whether it be a tax or a fee or, or some other charge associated with the billing statement. Um, those are, are the, the um, uh, supply charges that you're paying. And one other thing I'll point out here is this is divided into a couple of different categories. At the top of this itemized list, you have the electric supply, okay? Now, I will make a distinction here and see the importance of this. The supply and the delivery is separated on this, on this billing statement, as many do. The supply uh, in Maryland is a deregulated market, and so we have some choice in who supplies our energy. The delivery, on the other hand, you're restricted to who's in your territory. And so we'll talk about uh, the impact of that. But for most cases, uh, your utility provider, um, by default, is going to be your supplier and deliverer. Um, so in this case, BG&E is the supply and the delivery. Um, but there's a number of other charges there. I won't go item by item. You can get an explanation typically on the back of the billing, billing statement itself, or you can call the company and find out that sometimes that might raise more questions than you started with uh, talking to them. It can get kind of confusing what some of these different fees are. There can be county and local taxes included as well. Um, one thing I will point out is the Empower uh, Maryland charge. Um, most utilities are gonna have that Empower Maryland charge on there and that uh, our state mandated programs, they facilitate some energy savings programs. We'll talk about that later but there is a small uh, charge on 
on most utility bills, and you'll be able to see that on yours if you have it handy or you can look at it later. So um, uh, that's what a standard uh, bill looks like. Um, I have some other examples. I'm not going to go through each of these because they uh, essentially have the same informa information, just formatted a little bit different. What I will point out about this uh, uh, example that I have here from Chop Tank is that um, on the right hand side, it has some information for net metering. So if you're generating electricity, this is how uh, Chop Tank handles it. They have um, energy consumed and they have energy generated. And so you'll be able to see um, a credit uh, on your same billing statement in this case uh, for the energy that you might be producing with solar or something like that. And so how they kind of rectify that, you're using energy from Chop Tank and you're also generating your own energy. And so they have to credit that. Uh, but each bill pretty much has that same bit of information. Um, so again, I'm not gonna go through each of these. Uh, Pepco and Delmarva uh, bills pretty much look the same. Um, you know, in this case, uh, you're gonna see your um, kilowatt hour, your energy use on page two at the top right. Uh, in this case, I think it says 529, so that's pretty low. Um, but uh, again, you can see the historic chart on here as well. Um, if there's any questions, again, when we get to that point today uh, about your, uh, your own utility bill, I'd be more than happy to try to help. Uh, it might even help to see a picture of it. Um, but uh, again, you can, you can usually find more information on the bill itself uh, if you read the fine print. Uh, here's Potomac Edison. Again, the same kind of information. You're always looking for that kilowatt hour um, is your energy use, and that gets multiplied by uh, various factors. Now, Potomac Edison makes it a little bit harder. It's hard to tell on the Potomac Edison one, at least this copy of the bill I have. I'm not on Potomac Edison personally, so I don't know. Uh, but the example here does not tell you which one is a flat rate and which one is uh, per kilowatt hour. So it's a little bit harder to navigate there. You just have to read a little bit more deeply in the bill to see which one is per kilowatt hour and which one is a flat flat rate charge. Uh, but again, you can always subtract the flat rates out and then you'll know how much you're paying per kilowatt. You take all of the uh, uh, electrical um, uh, supply charges and divide by how many kilowatt hours you use. smiko has got the same kind of information on page two. You'll see in a number of places where, um, where the uh, energy use is highlighted. This one uh, is flashing, it is 1,382 kilowatt hours. Okay. And then you have uh, line items there on page two, um, the, the electrical supply charges, as well as the flat rates. Uh, and you should see uh, those charges are not multiplied. The flat rate charges are not multiplied by the kilowatt hours. Um, Here's another example of net metering. Um, on page two at the top right, you'll see a charge for the um, forward kilowatt hours. Um, and that's the, the electricity coming from SMECO. And the reverse energy is the energy that you're making with a solar panel or something like that. And so again, another example of how net metering works. Um, and this is a single bill. Okay. So let me uh, uh, go back to uh, what I mentioned um, about Maryland being a deregulated uh, market for energy supply. Uh, and really all that means is that you have your choice of, of energy suppliers. Again, your delivery is gonna be whatever utility area you live in, but you can pick supply, whether it be for economical reasons or more than likely, a lot of folks are doing it for environmental reasons. They want to source their, their electricity from a renewable resource. And, and uh, you can look for suppliers that, that kind of fit that um, uh, need that you might have. So uh, one area I'll point you to is the website mdenergychoice.com. Um, they, they've combined the electric and gas choice into a single web page now. So it's pretty convenient. But if you click on you go to that website and click on electrical choice. Uh, you can put in how much energy you use and, and what provider you're with. Um, they may ask a couple other questions. I'm not sure, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, once you go into the electrical choice option, you'll get uh, uh, different options. And so I've, I've put for different um, providers here. So just looking at the graph on the right, uh, when you're comparing options, let's say you were on BG&E and you were paying 
um, a little over eight cents per kilowatt. So eight cents per kilowatt. Um, and for this example, I, I just assumed uh, about the average household in Maryland uses a thousand kilowatt hours. So that's what factor I did. So if you're, if you're getting charged from BG&E uh, at eight cents, 8.33 cents pennies, uh, eight pennies and 33.33, .33, um, you you will end up paying uh, at the uh, end of the month, your bill would be $83. Okay, so the supply price here is given in cents and the cost is given in dollars, $83. Um, you can you can put your own provider in there if you were top tank them offer and the others. And I just highlighted one option that it's uh, giving me with clean choice energy. Uh, so, that, you know, they give the details where that uh, electricity is being sourced from. Perhaps it's solar. I don't know off the top of my head, but the details are given there. And it gives a price rating of, of um, eight, uh, eight cents, a little over eight cents per kilowatt hour. So if you did the total for that, uh, that's $81. Uh, so there might be a little bit of energy savings uh, financial there as well as the renewable options. So you can go in and play with that system and, and work the numbers with that. Now, one uh, uh, um, bit of information I'll share with you is, is what's in yellow down there. Is, uh, recognize that um, the, the comparisons that you're doing here might be based on a seasonal rate. And so right now, most utilities have started their uh, seasonal rates uh, for the winter. Uh, okay, and so this is an example for BG&E for the October to May, which we're in the midst of now, is, is the higher rate, 8.33 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, whereas in the summer, BG&E lowers their residential rate. So that's something to keep in mind too. You can use the, the uh, annual weighted average or, uh, or just recognize that they're that can change at different periods of time. Uh, uh, and that'll be, that'll be listed on your utility bill, uh, what season and what rate you're in. Um, all the utility bills have that information on there, what you're paying per kilowatt hour. And so, or you could go to this website and it, it should have that information updated.